lot of great stories in politics about the underdog winning, and this is going to be one of them. Well, the 1988 speech by George Bush at the public convention is, I think, one of the really great underrated political speeches uh, of 20th century. For seven and a half years, I've helped the president conduct the most difficult job on earth. Bush had been in public office for many years. He'd been vice president for eight years up to that point, but people just didn't know him. Now you must see me for what I am, the Republican candidate for president of the United States. George Bush had a couple of questions he had to answer for himself. One was, how do I show I'm my own man? Bush has really been the underdog in this race. Dukakis had a huge lead over Bush in the polls. And there was this sense of Bush that he was kind of this, uh, he was a wimp. And Newsweek ran a cover article on this uh, called The Wimp Factor. And so you see a lot of tough talk. The fact is they talk and we deliver. He had a lot to accomplish in this convention speech. He needed to show people that he was tough, he needed to show people that he could carry forward the Reagan legacy, and he really had to clarify the choice between himself and Dukakis. First of all, there's a policy goal here, which is A, to get across the idea that Republicans are going to protect your wallets from Democrats who want to tax you. The second thing is, he cast in a way that makes him look as tough as possible. My opponent won't rule out raising taxes, but I will and the Congress will push me to raise taxes and I'll say no, and they'll push and I'll say no, and they'll push again and I'll say, read my lips, no new taxes. That line showed President Bush as a man of conviction. And conviction is valued. Americans want their president to stand for something. George H.W. Bush was not known as a funny guy. In politics, the best kind of humor is self-deprecating. If you're Chris Rock, you can make fun of other people. If you're a politician, people like it when you make fun of yourself. It shows humility. I'll try to be fair to the other side. I'll try to hold my charisma in check. And uh, I... It's a very deft, very effective use of humor, both to humanize himself, but also it's to eviscerate his opponent. I'm the one who will not raise taxes. My opponent now says he'll raise them as a last resort or a third resort. But when a politician talks like that, you know that's one resort he'll be checking into. And I... And so he's taking these shots at Dukakis without seeming cruel. That is one of the most effective uses of humor in political speeches. But let's be frank, things aren't perfect in this country. There are people who haven't tasted the fruits of the expansion. If people had a rap on the Republican Party, is that it wasn't compassionate enough. And the effort here, I think, is to cast his proposals as ones that aren't just favoring the wealthy, which is what, you know, the sort of perennial charge Democrats would make against Republicans. Some would say it's soft and insufficiently tough to care about these things. But where is it written? that we must act if we do not care, as if we're not moved. Well, I am moved. I want a kinder and gentler nation. Bush is trying to walk the line in this speech, and I think he does it very successfully, between owning the Reagan legacy, promising to carry it forward, but almost promising Reaganism with a human face. He's taking the wimp factor, and he's making it a virtue. This is my mission and I will complete it. It's one of the rare examples of a speech that actually, I think, did help him win. The poetry in the speech, self-deprecating humor. And it was funny and it was lighthearted and it made him more human to the American people. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you. <laughs>